Crafty Jenna Bug. Here's another video of me working in this awesome journal. I think before I crack this beautiful beast open, I would like to bring back the prompt jars and make some more random chaotic ephemera. So that is what we shall do. Boom, boom, boom. All right, let me get a list, or a piece of paper to make a list, I should say. All right, let's do this. What will we pick? What will we pick? Junk mail. Okay. Tea dyed paper. That's easy. And... Oops, I dropped both of them. Give me one. Lined paper. Okay. Yarn. Okay, so we've got junk mail, tea dyed paper, lined paper and yarn. So that's four materials to use when making the ephemera. Next, let's figure out what pieces of ephemera I'm going to make. An invitation, an envelope, A notepad, a specimen card. Okay, so envelope, invitation, specimen card, notepad. Okay, and then focal points for these. Dog, flower, that's going to be easy. Oops, all those fell out. A circle, and finally, sentiment, that one fell out. Okay. Oh, sentiment, circle, flower and dog. So the last time I used the prompt jars for making ephemera for this journal, I had music paper or sheet music, excuse me. Well, I have a notebook full of, I have a notebook for making your own sheet music and it is lined paper. So I'm going to use that as one of the lined or as one of the items. Tea dyed paper, I'm going to have to go look and see if I have any or if I'm going to make any. Junk mail I have a ton of and yarn I have a ton of. Um, make an envelope, invitation, specimen card, a notepad. I guess I could do the flower on the specimen card. It'll also, it could also have a circle. All right, I've got some thinking to do. I might go ahead and tea dye this paper actually while I'm thinking about it. All right, so I have my little bit of tea left. All right, in case you didn't know, I save used tea bags for making the tea concoctions for dyeing paper. This is black tea. I'm going to set it in there and hopefully it dies a little stronger. And then this is herbal tea. I think it might be lemon tea, but it has rose hips in it. And I am just going to wet it. Mm. 
and see what happens. Oh, you know what I just realized? This paper shouldn't be on the sheet to dry because it has Distress Oxide ink on it, so it's going to alter the colors. Oops. Let me switch that up. All right, I have switched this paper to clean newsprint. It's only been used to paint on, so it shouldn't pull anything. Is that going to leave any color? Potentially. What about you? Let's just dump the rest of this in there. All right, that is gonna need some time to dry. So, while that dries, we can work on some of the other things. All right, on the back of this front page, which I still need to do something on, I've still got a few pages to work on in here. On the back of this, I decided I wanna make this butterfly die cut a pocket. And then in it, I'm gonna put this tag and then it's going to stick out over the top and you can see whatever tag topper from this side so what am I going to do for the background is the question let me see I've got a plan I want to take these three distress oxide inks and go yellow to peel, or mustard seed to peeled paint to rustic wilderness. And use a combination of this stencil and this stencil. These are from Crafter's Workshop, 12 by 12 templates. Um, this one, I don't know what this one is called. This one is Trendy Bracket. And I don't know what this one is. The uh, bottom of the package is missing. So, bottom of this one's about to be missing too. I marked a, a dot right here for my center, and hopefully I can keep it centered. And then the idea is basically that. So this in the middle and then these around it. Although those are kind of cool too. All right, this one here. Get my daubers out, my Distress Ink. Oh my goodness, I love it. I love it. I wasn't sure if I would, but I do. And then this. Oh, yeah. I don't regret any of that. Okay, so I am going to glue down my pocket and I am going to do that very carefully just around the edges and not even all the edges come on oh fudge that was crazy while that dries I am going to ink the back of this. I think I want it, what color do I want poking out the top of this? Let's see, maybe some frayed burlap? I think I'm going to go with frayed burlap on the back of this. So I'm going to go ahead and ink the back and the edges and then sew around it 
couple of times. And I might add an eyelet, but I'm not sure about that. Maybe a brad at the top would be cool. I wonder if I have a cute flower brad. So I've got some things to look for. Oh, but I was thinking about doing some ribbon at the top for a tag topper. So I've got a few things to do and figure out while this dries, and I'll be back to show you what I decided. All right, I had a slight mishap with recording. Um, <laughs> I thought I was recording, and I had some stuff I did, and then I went, why isn't it recording? So, now, um, we are going back to the prompts. So, I have junk mail, these two flyers that were mailed to me. I have tea dyed paper and I also dyed this lined paper earlier in the video. I ended up leaving the tea bags sitting. Like once some of it had dried, I just moved the tea bags to dry completely on the paper and I really liked the way that turned out. So this is my lined paper and this is my tea dyed paper. This is also tea dyed paper because why not? This one is smaller because I cut a piece of it off. I was planning to make an envelope. And so I have the basic shape of my envelope set up. And I think what I'm going to do is I have envelope and invitation. So I'm going to make an invitation to go in the envelope and there'll be one unit together. Um, I will also use this, one of these, to um, make the invitation and then I'll cover it. I think I'm going to use some of this lined paper for the inside of the, you know, for one side of the invitation. You can kind of see through it a little, but not enough. Not really enough. So I think it'll be all right. So I've got this envelope shape figured out. Just a little simple flap. It did have a rip here. I'm going to put washi tape up the side, I think. But before I do that, I need to figure out how big I need my invitation to be. And I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom because that's where I'm going to have the closure for the envelope. So I'm going to shift it a little bit this way. Actually, a bit more. That should be fine. And then... I will mark it there and I want it to stick out a bit. See my fold is here, so I will cut it to there. And that way I will have an invitation that fits in my envelope. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so now I'm going to back one side of this in this, and then the other I will pick a pretty paper to do, like one side I'll have a pick, you know, an image I make, and the other side will have like all of the information for the, you know, party. So, let's do this. You can see a little bit, but I think it'll be less visible once I actually get the, you know, quote unquote party information on there. All right, for the other side of my invitation, this paper is what I'm going to use. This little section right here, because that is going to be so adorable. I think this is going to be the top. That is going to be so adorable. I love those little birds. Here it is. I wrote garden party on this side in some gold metallic pen. 
And on this side, I wrote, you are invited to my garden party. When? March 15th. Wear my garden. Wear comfy shoes and be prepared to smell all the lovely flowers. Love, Jen. I ed edged around it in frayed burlap just to give it a little bit of a um, vintage feel, break up some of the edging. I took the envelope and I did the same on all of the edges that we would see. And now we will stick this in here. Oh, it's a little close to the edge, but that's okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I may have edged the wrong edge, but we're good. We're good. I'm not, I'm not upset. Not upset at all. So there is my invitation. My envelope needs some love. I think I'm going to put washi tape. There is my envelope with my invitation for my garden party. Maybe I should put some stamps on it like you would for mail. Here is what I've done with the envelope. I stamped a few things on it. I've got like a, um, a stamp mail. I've got like a mail stamp, a, a little label. I used um, the darker brown is ground espresso permanent ink. The lighter is vintage photo permanent ink. Did you miss? I stamped letter in ground espresso and then I did a bunch of floral images so that you would know it belongs in a floral journal. <laughs> so this checks off junk mail, tea dyed paper, lined paper, envelope, and invitation. I did not do any of the focal points. I mean, I have flowers, so I guess we could count that. I guess. There are flowers all over it, so. I will most likely do more flowers because that's how I roll. So that is one piece of ephemera ready to roll. And then specimen card and a notepad. Yarn, sentiment, circle, and dog. I guess we can work on the specimen card next. I am going to use more junk mail for that. I think I will cut this in half. Okay, I went on Pinterest real quick and I found this uh, vintage dictionary page for dogs and printed it out and I'm going to use one for my specimen card. So if this is the size of a specimen card, this is the size of the picture window kind of thing because this is going to be the background of whatever this is. So I need a dog that will fit within these constraints. So let's see, he would work. Was that a Dalmatian? That's a Scotch Terrier. No, wait, that's number nine. That is a Dalmatian. Well, let's just use it. Okay. I like the number nine on there. Oh, that is a little warm toned though. Maybe I should use something else for the background. So what I did was I want my window to be about here for the specimen card and that way the dog will look like that, okay? But the issue is, uh, so I put this on the back where it won't matter where I, that I drew the lines, okay? And 
And now I need to remove slightly inside those lines because I don't want it to go all the way to the edge. So I'm actually going to cut slightly lower there. And that'll also give me surface to glue to. So that, ooh, is very crooked. <laughs> like I said, maybe I should have measured. I'm going for it because I don't really like it. I'm rolling with it. I don't think I'm going to put acrylic on this one. I thought about it, but I don't think so. I think we are just going to glue. All right, so there's my very wonky um, specimen card. I'm not real pleased with it. Honestly, I'm not even sure if it will get used in this journal, but I made it to fill the prompts. So it's done. I could always alter things to make that, that look a little better, but yeah. I stamped the word Dalmatian, because that is the type of dog this is, using a very obnoxious um, stamp, letter stamp set. Yeah, it was a pain. I've got ink all over my fingers. Yeah, that was frustrating. This whole, this whole specimen card was frustrating, but I can now cross dog and specimen card off of my list. Uh, so next is notepad. Or, so I've got left notepad, yarn, sentiment, and circle. So... I could do a notepad with a sentiment and then make a circle of yarn. All right, so off camera, I made a little notepad. I just took some scrap pieces of paper and I roughly tore them so that they were around the same size. Again, with that lined T paper. And then I poked two holes with a hole punch and put a piece of yarn through and tied a little bow. And that is my notepad. And that is yarn. And then on the front, I'm gonna put a sentiment. In this case, March is a month of expectation. And that was quoted to Emily Dickinson. There we go. That takes care of yarn, notepad, and sentiment. I just have to come up with a circle. It might be cool to take some yarn and a bottle and some glue. Granted, that's not a piece of ephemera, but it could be something to decorate a page. So, I'm going to leave those to dry. Alright, while I wait for those circles to dry, which may or may not even work, I have decided I want to work on this page. Having this brown bit up here really makes me want to bring some brown heat to this page, this front page, the title page, as it were. I have these craft paper label stickers I got from the Dollar Tree, and I think I want to stamp March on them. All right, scoot you over so I can scoot you up. I'm going to use permanent ink, probably black soot, because it is dark and glorious. Oh, these letters. These are Hampton Art 
VW0434 alphabet stamp set. And they are pretty cute. I got my letters picked out. This uh, measures, what is it, two and a half inches? Two and a quarter inches, yeah. Two and a quarter inches wide. So I have worked to find the center by putting my zero here. And I got an inch and an eighth. One, two, three, four, yeah. Inch and an eighth on each side. All right, I found my center. I am lower then center this way. Oh, I love it. Yay. Yes. That's going to look great. I think I want it right in the middle. But the question is, do I want anything behind it? Hmm. All right, I have this broken peacock feather. And since the front is covered in peacock feathers, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to use this. All right, this is what I ended up doing once it was dry. I've got a piece of washi tape over the stem of the feather and I used hot glue to adhere this little um, dimensional sticker because there was a void and I wanted to fill the void and I knew if I used tacky glue then it would squish out and so now it kind of looks a bit more intentional maybe it doesn't hold very well though might have to come up with something better for that or also glue it down with tacky glue and then I added these I don't think I filmed that I added these little die cuts behind the march to kind of balance the uh, the feeling on this page it definitely feels like it might be missing something down here but I enjoy these flowers so much I don't want to cover them so there is the title page Oh, and I love the way it looks peeking out. Yes. Yes. Okay, next. On this page, I'd really like for the words of this song to stay intact. I don't want to mess them up. I don't want to cover them up. Um, I think the times they are changing really fits for March because of all of the changing weather patterns and um, things like that. So I don't want to cover that. I think what I want to do for this page is I have this little guy from a piece of, from a pack of Tim Holtz ideology um, field notes snippets and it says beautiful wildflowers and I think I want to stick it here and I have this die cut made out of beige paper and I think I want to stick it so that it's coming out and off of the page so when you turn the page you see it, but I don't know that I want it to stay that color. I could stamp on it. That might be cool. I thought about coloring it, but if I leave it this color, I could stamp words on it. I have this stamp, which is like a newspaper. A German, it looks like, newspaper. And I could stamp so that it looks like the words are, the picture, the flower is made of, is coming out of the book. But I'm, I'm explaining myself badly. My idea is that it would look like the flower has come off of the pages of the book and out of the book. All right. I think I'm definitely going to use Distress permanent ink. I'm definitely going to use permanent ink just in case I decide I want to color them after the fact. I 
love it. I love it. That looks so cool. Okay. All right, I'm really excited about this. So, so I have these two washi tape stickers, and they look like book spines. This one, one of them says, How to Know the Wildflowers. The other is the Children's Book of Gardening. And I thought they would look cool over here covering up these, um, like, questions about this, you know, like, how to interpret. It's from a literature book, so you know how like, you interpret things, in a, you know, when you're studying literature. Well, I thought, because this is a book, I thought it would be cool if it there were more books here to kind of tie it together. It's not just a, a random book. And uh, the beautiful wildflowers has wildflowers sprouting out of the pages. And I have this little piece of um, fabric that I just played with some stitching on. I was testing the, um, I got some new bobbins and I wanted to make sure that they would work properly. So this I thought would look cool as like a shelf for these to sit on. And then it's also kind of a frame for the words. And I don't know about this. I mean, I am going for chaos, aren't I? And then I thought it would look really cool peeking out down here. What? Layers. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. All right, there we have it. I probably could have benefited from putting the washi tape on uh, like a piece of cardstock first because this paper is so thin that you can see all the wrinkles from gluing it down. Um, and they would have been, I don't know, a little bit more sturdy. As you can see over here, you can tell where they were glued down and where they are stuck. So that is my only concern with this page, but I think it is such a neat idea. And I've never seen anyone do anything like this in a junk journal, so I'm pretty pleased. Um, yeah, I kept with like the book theme and book coming alive with flowers. Yes. Awesome. And the times they are a changing. Yay. And I had a lot of fun making this little fabric piece, so I'm going to probably be utilizing more of those in the future. I'm going to play with some more things with my sewing machine that doesn't, that didn't get a lot of use before I started using it in the junk journal. I do wish that I had gotten this part leaf a little darker, but it kind of blends into lighter. So it, it works, I think. I'm going with it because I've done it and that's all that can be said. Let's see. Is this is fun. I think I might make a tuck spot here. But I think I'm going to make a cluster of some kind. It'll also add a little bit of extra strength to the page, especially if I expand it further this way. I mean, this is doing a little bit to uh, strengthen the page. It is very, very thin and brittle. So a little something something here might help. Or maybe I should put it this way, but I kind of want it this way. Hmm. Anywho, I'm going to figure out some sort of cluster. Maybe I'll pull out the sewing machine. I do, I am really enjoying all the sewn elements in this journal. So, got to keep adding them. It'll be more cohesive, right? I think. Alright. going to let that dry and play with some ideas for a cluster. Alright, here is what I have done. I took... This yellow piece of mesh is from some onions. I thought it looked cool hanging off the side of the page. And then I sewed it down and across and plan to stick it about here. And then I found this as part of a printable from the Art Scavenger. I can put the link down below to, their, to that page and I'm going to glue it down right here with some of these strings behind it. And I think that looks really cool.
And I am lining up the stitching with the page. I want a little bit sticking out on both the bottom and the top, or the side and the top. You can see some of it sticking out. Of course, the mesh on the side. And then this. go. Yes, that looks like more of a flower. Yeah, yay! <laughs> now, it didn't really do much for making this page sturdier, but I'm happy with what I achieved. So, there's that. Well, I'm going to let that dry before I do anything else. I do want to put something in here, and I do have this little tuck spot here. So... I think I will just let those dry. I really love the way that turned out. All right, so on the other side of these, I've got this envelope I decorated with a bunch of different distress sprays and coffee. That's why they're these shiny circles. That's where I left coffee grounds. And I want to use it as a pocket. Here. So it sticks over that and then you can see it. I think it, the blue works really well with the blue in the dragonfly wings. I like that. So that is what I'm going to do. But I don't want to just glue this flap down. I want to make it a tuck spot. I could glue it down this way and then stick things in it here, or I could do like I did in the January journal and glue it here and then have two tuck spots, but then what would I tuck in that bottom spot? I mean, technically this would be a pocket, which could work for something small. Because open this side out. So then, I mean, I could just glue it right up on that edge and decide later. And that gives me some options as far as what to do with this flap. Okay. So I'm going to need to let that dry a bit because I don't want it to accidentally glue shut on this side. So I'll be back once that's dry. All right, I figured out, I have figured out what I'm doing with this envelope. So inside that um, Tim Holtz ideology field note snippet ephemera pack, there were all of these little like naturalist traveler companion and like dictionary pages with different animals and you know things you'd find in wildlife. Well, because I made that specimen card I'm not so proud of, I thought the specimen card could go in this envelope. And then these kind of make a bit more, you know, it, it kind of makes a bit more sense with these on here. Like it's a little scientific notebook kind of thing, like a little pocket where you were keeping your, where it makes it feel like a pocket where someone was keeping their, like, field guide for, you know, going out in nature, um, and, you know, kind of spilled some things, and it, it just makes more sense to me now to have this in there, because I, I decided I wanted this in here, and I couldn't figure out how to make it tie in, and granted, it's a Dalmatian, it's not necessarily, like, an animal you would find in the wild, but it makes a bit more sense now and I feel a lot better about just, you know, not just shoving it in there and kind of making it work together. I think I need one more. And I did ink these up with some vintage photo just to make them feel a bit more vintage. I 
I wasn't sure I would figure a find a use for these, but I'm really glad I bought them now. They were kind of a a whim, you know, like a snap decision purchase. There we go. Cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. I don't really care for this, but I'm not going to let it get me down. So I think what else I'm going to do is I have this. Um, it's a vintage flower bookmark, I think it's called. I can link the Pinterest page where I found it. It was a free printable. But I thought I could turn it like this and make it a pocket this way. And you'll, you know, you're kind of unfolding the layers. Oh, what's the, oh, look at, you know, like going along. Oh, what's behind this? That's pretty. Oh, cool. What's on here? Oh, cool. <laughs> I don't know. And then I can tuck things in this pocket. But do I want to do anything to the page behind it? Maybe I should distress the page with some vintage photo. Before I glue that down, I want to make like a splatter. So one of the times I was playing with my Cricut, I was making stencils. And I made a stencil of splats. And I think I want some splats. Nothing crazy, just a couple. A couple of little splatters. And actually, I think I will glue this down first so that I can add the splats. I think I'll make it in brown, in vintage photo because then it'll look like coffee maybe? <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I love that a lot. I could have done black soot and made it look like ink. But I think I want another one here. I love it. I love it. That is awesome. That worked out better than I expected. Yay. Oh, that is so cool. And then on this side, I went ahead and glued this side down to make this a pocket. And when I was eating my lunch today, I had some um, like instant noodles kind of thing. And this is the seasoning packet. This had dehydrated vegetables in it. And so I cleaned it out really well. And I think I want to put it here so that I have a pocket here. That's a pocket. This is a pocket. I could probably also make it a pocket that way, but I won't. That's a lot of pockets. So I can glue this down like this and it sticks out a bit and I like that. And then this was from a hyacinth that I was given. It was a care instructions, forced bulb kind of thing. And I think I want it to go here and I think I'm going to make it a tuck spot. So it's going to be a pocket, pocket, tuck spot. I'm going to glue that down and I'll be right back. Well, I have to apologize to you because I somehow did not manage to film making these three pieces of ephemera. I'm very sorry. <laughs> so for this one, these two tags were pre-made. They're part of a free printable. I can link down below. Um, you do have to like sign up, but it's free and they're gorgeous. Um, so for this, I used peeled paint to, uh, I used peeled paint distress oxide ink to distress around the, side, the edges. I added a little bit of lace for a pull tab on the back. I used my dauber and the peeled paint all over and then I used rustic wilderness and a leaf stencil to get that little leaf on the back. This one goes in this pocket. Cute. This one, again, 
pre-made tag. I used frayed burlap to distress around the edges. I put in an eyelet and a little bit of like a hemp cord or jute, I'm not sure what you call it where you are. Frayed burlap all over the back and then I splattered a little bit of water because I just love the way frayed burlap changes color when it gets wet. And that one goes here. And then this little guy is just a little tab I made. I think I used, do I have a punch for these? This one, I don't think so. I think this one was made with the Cricut on some cardstock. It was actually a light blue color. And I used old paper over it to give it a bit more earth tone color. Distressed around the edges with frayed burlap. I used, where is it? Oh no, where did I put it? It's my little dauber guy. Oh, here he is. I used this Distress Stain. They don't make these anymore, and I'm really bummed about it because I've seen uh, Barbara at 49 Dragonflies use hers, and uh, I wish I had more than just picket fence. But, say lovey. I used this to, I don't know, if, oh, you can see it, okay. to kind of daub some white glue right, or not white glue, some white, the picket fence color. I used that dauber to sm black right there and I thought it just, I don't know, it looked kind of cool. I had this little scrap that I colored with some copper paint. I put in a small square shaped brown brad and I put the sentiment collect beautiful moments because this seemed very much like a collection of different things. Back, same frayed burlap. I used peeled paint on the back and you can see some of the distress through. I think that was just the coloration because the dauber was very wet. So either way I think it's cool. And it goes in this little tuck spot here. Yeah this between this pay this side of the page I mean there's like a whole collection of things here. It makes me feel like somebody had a like a little scientific notebook. They were out in the field um, collecting information, making scientific observations. They've got, you know, like this scientific drawing of a tulip plant in here. They've got a fern leaf that they pressed. It just, it feels very exploratory. I mean, they've got the different little specimen cards, although this is, this one kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. It's still, I think it kind of works. And then I still, I'm not sure. I want some sort of thing here that says like field notes or something to that effect. I'll have to figure that out. But then back here on the back of the page, you've got this collection of tags that feel kind of similar. I mean, you know, you've got nature elements and it looks kind of like you took a, a specimen you found and just kind of glued it down to something real quick that you just had in your pocket. That's, I don't know, that's the vibe I get. And I decided to kind of roll with it. It feels chaotic and fun, collect beautiful moments. So I did, I collected them. Yeah, this is one of my favorite like pages going on right now. So I've done a fair amount in the front, in the first signature. Oh, it's already getting, to the point where it doesn't want to close. I love it. I've done a fair bit in the front signature. Why don't we move on back to the back, to the second signature? Look at the difference in size there. Like, just the amount of stuff that has gone in here versus in here. I think there's only one. I've worked on that page and this page and then, oh no, get off of there. And then these two. I am loving this journal. What should I work on next? Hmm. Hmm. This page, I think I might glue down to this one. But I want to decorate this first. Maybe some stenciling? Some leaves coming out from behind? That could be cool.
All right, I've got my stenciling done. It looks really cute. I started to use my white glue and then I remembered that it's gonna look all ridged. So I'm gonna go and switch to the matte gel. And I bought a tool from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna try this silicone facial mask applicator. I think it'll be easier to spread glue with it and easier to clean, which is the most important thing, because then I could just let it dry on there and then um, peel it off. That was my logic around it anyway. And it spreads fairly easily. Hopefully it doesn't make any of my Distress ink run. I wanted you to see how I did it though, so I can refer back to it later if it works. So you do see a bit of the leaves behind. I, part of me wishes, there, so there are two ways I could have done that differently. I am getting some bleed through. There are a couple of ways I could have handled that differently. I could have done the entire stencil and then you wouldn't have these like breaks. I could have only stent like put this over and then traced around it so that I knew exactly where it would lay and then only stenciled to that point. But you know, I'm learning. Even now I'm still learning page is very wet but I love it I think that's gonna look so good just like that I kind of want to do something else to it but I'm not sure what maybe some like matching leaf die cuts I kind of also want to take some wild honey So another benefit of using the silicone brush to spread glue, <clears throat> I used a baby wipe and I wiped it all off right away. Yeah, so now I don't have to wash a glue brush, wait for it to dry before applying any more glue. That is $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. Awesome. That might be my new favorite tool. Let me dry this and we'll be back to see how it looks. All right, this is how it looks now that it is dry on both sides. It's completely dry. I really like this page. Like I said, I'm going to cut out some more leaf die cuts on the Cricut. I'm pointing over there because the Cricut's over there. Um, and I have to like completely clean my desk off and make room for it. I don't have it like set up and ready to use at any given moment yet. I need to get a table for it. It's in the works, I promise. But this is incomplete. I, I want like two things to go right here. And I think that'll bring it together. For now, let's shift over to this side. I have, I saved this. Uh, someone gave me these bulbs last spring. And I saved the packaging that came with it because why not? And I thought it would be cute as a pocket. All right, I figured out what I want to do with this. I thought about putting it over here, but I don't think it looks that great there. But instead, I'm going to turn to the back of this page and I want to make a pocket out of it. I did sew some like hemp decorative ribbon type thing on the side because it looked kind of like, um, like garden path marker, not mark garden bed markers, you know, like border. And I'm going to make the pocket about here. And the reason for that is when you flip this page, this fencing will be like centered to this page. See what I mean? 
and I think it'll look better than if I put the pocket at the bottom. So that, I'm gonna mark that with my pencil so that I don't forget. I don't mess it up, just a light little mark. And then I wanna use this stencil down here to kind of make it look like, I don't know, some wood lying down. Hmm. Do I wanna do it that way or do I wanna do it this way? I'll do it this way. <clears throat> and I will use some frayed burlap, or I'm sorry, vintage photo. I don't know what I'm saying. I can't read. So sorry. Okay. Awesome. I like that. And then I can put something in the pocket at some point. Not right now. I actually think that might be where I end this video because I'm going to have to let that dry and I'm going to have to set something heavy on it so that it stays. But thank you so much for watching. I am really enjoying myself in this journal. I cannot even express that enough. Um, this is me in my element, honestly. So, thank you for watching. I, I hope you're enjoying this. I certainly am. That is for sure. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.